Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from the Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module known as Migration and Occupational Shift under the paper Tribal Culture of India. The objectives are first to deal with internal and international migration, both of which are large scale with impacts on economic growth and poverty reduction in many regions of the country to classify concepts and definition of migration and occupational shift to focus on the overview of migration among Indian population and to explore the formation and emergence of historical development of migration and to discuss on development of major causes of stagnancy in occupational pattern of India also examines intergeneration and national migration and occupation mobility among in Indian population. Now we'll take in India, three out of four households include immigrant. However, despite the large scale of migration in absolute numbers of people involved and in India's long history of population and labor mobility, labor migration has rarely migration from one area to another in search of improved livelihoods is a key feature of human history. While some regions and sectors fall behind in their capacity to support populations, other move ahead and people migrate to assess these emerging opportunities. Industrialization widens the gap between rural and urban areas, inducing a shift of the workforce towards industrialization areas. There is extensive debate on the factors that cause population to shift from those that emphasize individual rationality and household behavior to those that cite the structural logic of capitalist development. Moreover, Numerous studies show that the process of migration is influenced by social, cultural, and economic factors, and outcomes can be easily vastly different from men and women for different groups and different locations. An anthropological approach, which is both draconic and synchronic, includes a consideration for all aspects of people's social, economic, and cultural life, including the social habits of the human population. It not only includes the ways in which people in any society live, but also how it is affected on the level by everything that is going on in the regional, national, and international arena. Globalization of human capital through international migration is no longer about global physical presence only. It is also about global applicability of skills across various fields of specialization. This marks the main characteristics of skilled migration from India to developed countries in the 21st century. The focus is shifting away from professionals in specific occupations like doctors, engineers, scientists, architects, bankers to information technology professionals embodying in a way more generic skills. Overview of migration in India. There are very few studies of occupational mobility in India mainly because there are very few sources of data on the subject migration and occupational shift. There are many studies covering developed and less developed countries that have documented the persistence of economic and social inequalities across generations based on outcome indicators such as income, earnings, occupation, and level of education. In the literature on social mobility, occupation is considered a good indicator of social status, incomes, and living standard. A low 
degree of intergeneration occupation mobility implies that the advantages and disadvantages inherent in the occupation status of one generation are transmitted to the next generation a situation of low mobility across generation may be favorable for families that are in fortunate socio economic circumstances but in the case of families that are less fortunate low mobility often entails social exclusion materials and human capital improvement and restriction on the opportunities and expectation that would otherwise widen their capability to make choices there are further reasons why intergeneration occupation mobility in rural india should be of a particular interest to social scientists and policy makers rural india is marked by extreme forms of social and economic inequality and in particular by variety of forms of caste discrimination the study of occupation mobility can identify the extent to which the process of economic development and modernization has broken tradition hierarchies and caste and class barriers to occupation choice given the relatively limited employment opportunities available within the villages the main vehicle for intergeneration occupation mobility in india is migration to urban or semi urban areas at the same time since 1969 69% of india's population still lives in villages it is important to examine and understand the level of intergenerational occupation mobility within villages themselves concepts and definition migration that is of human is a movement of people from one place in the world to another for purpose of taking up permanent or semi permanent residence usually across a political boundary An example of semi-permanent residence would be the seasonal movements of migrant farm laborers. Migration sociological studies of migration involves the more or less permanent movement of individuals or group across symbolic or vertical boundaries into new residential areas and communities. Sociological studies of migration are diverse and usually form part of larger problem in, for example, research into kinship social networks or economic development it is conventional to distinguish push from pull factors in the analysis of migration the former for example high rates of unemployment in the area of origin are usually viewed as inducing migration of a conservative security maximizing nature while the latter economic expansion in the host country or region are said to encourage risk taking and income maximizing migration there is a considerable literature on rural urban migration in developing countries and this has confirmed the importance of family and friends in the destination area as an explanatory variable for the rate of migration out of particular areas of origin money through government doles and relief cannot solve the problem of small farm viability but there is no salvation at all from the landless rural poor who migrate to urban areas to occupy slums seasonal migration changes to permanent migration it is estimated that the metros are swelling with a daily influx of people which somewhat less into large and small cities and towns thus the suffering of both rural and urban slum population is compounded making for the typical loss situation they do not need or want pity what they want is fighting chance to live in dignity even if poor that can only be provided by proactive change in the present wrong agriculture policy that is at the root of the problem motive for migration the primary motive for migration recorded by the census is an important indicator how mobility is influenced by conditions the first is change place of residence second mood for employment reasons and the thirdly business motives technology driven industrialization has in necessarily caused a shift in human values certainly among those sections of the society that have benefited from industrialization in india such people speak and think 
about liberty and freedom without stopping to think whether there are others who cannot even dream of those desirable conditions of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The freedom they seek is to consume without the responsibility of leaving something for others or regenerating resources or even a thought for the resources of a generation as yet unborn. Solution to Prohibit Migration There are so many things new about the study of man by man through the scientific approaches on the origins and the behavior and the physical, social, cultural development of humans. Anthropologists using cultural perspective to understand patterns view human population as biological as well as cultural entities. In short, anthropologists of one kind or another are liable to investigate almost everything about human beings, our evolution, our genes, our emotions, our behaviors, how people organize their living, our knowledge, our religion, our behaviors, and so forth. Is there at all a solution for this situation? But before looking for solutions, the causes of the problem need to be understood. The main causes are the first, no land or poor land due to neglected land reforms. Second, farmers' food security being based on the market by purchasing food for himself through income earned by sale of his farm produce. Third, agriculture policy encouraging cash crops rather than food crops or marketable water-intensive food crop rather than rain-fed food crops. Then, neglect of rural agriculture water security by neglect of localized water management. Next is soil erosion due to deforestation. Next is loss of soil fertility due to continued use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. And the next is lack of micro credit to farmers. And the lastly, industry based high input cost technologies in farming, including high yield, water demanding seed, instead of sustainable organic methods and cost based limitation to cooperation between farmers. These main causes have a self evident set of solutions which will reduce the seasonal and permanent migration of rural people to urban centers. People who migrate to urban centers need jobs that is employment, and this causes the government to attempt to create more jobs by further industrialization. Sensible solution to the causes of today's farmers' crisis situation will not only largely relieve the government of the need to provide jobs, since rural people will have occupations that will keep them independent and working on the land, but will also increase food, grain, production. Then comes economic impact of migration. At the aggregate level, labor immigration affects the sending country's economy through its impact on the market, on macroeconomic variables, savings, balance of payments, and so on, and social relations. These impacts are summarized below. Four major categories of interventions can be emphasized, which will differ for internal and external migration, these categories relate to first, addressing underdevelopment and improving the synergy between migration and development, second, improving labor market outcomes, thirdly, ensuring basic entitlements to migrant workers, and finally, improving the social and political environment for migration. Now we take health and education. Laborers working in harsh circumstances and living in unhygienic conditions suffer from serious occupational health problems and are vulnerable to diseases. Those working in quarries, construction sites and mines suffer from various health hazards, mostly lung diseases. As the employer does not follow safety measures, accidents are quite frequent. Migrants cannot assess various health and family care programs due to their 
temporary status. Free public health care facilities and programs are not accessible to them. For women workers, there is no provision of maternity leave, forcing them to resume work almost immediately after childbirth. Workers, particularly those working in the tile factories and brick clean suffer from occupational health hazards such as body ache, sunstroke and skin irritation. Now we will say the impact on source areas. The major impacts of migration on source areas occur through changes in the labor market, income and assets, changes in the pattern of expenditure and investment. Although seasonal outmigration potentially has the effect of smoothing employment over the annual cycle, rural outmigration could cause a tightening of the labor market in some circumstances. However, empirical evidence from outmigrant areas doesn't often attest to this. This may be because outmigration often takes place in labor surplus. Role of Panchayas Panchayas should emerge as the focus of the resource pool for migrant workers residing in their area. They should maintain a register of migrant workers and issue identity cards and passbooks to them. Further, it should be mandatory for recruiters to deposit with the panchayats a list of the laborers recruited by them along with other employment details. With growing IT-based communication, it may become possible for panchayats or NGOs to maintain a record of potential employers and employees. Problems encountered by migrants. Problems encountered by migrants workers may be examined at two levels. The first in relation to recruitment violations and second in relation to working and living conditions in destination countries. Commonly reported violations are delayed deployment or non-deployment of workers, overcharging or collection of fees, far in excess of authorized placement fees and illegal recruitment. Illegal recruitment is another serious violation of the rule as workers get recruited and deployed overseas without the government knowing about them. Being unlicensed, illegal recruiters are beyond the reach of normal regulatory machinery of the National Overseas Employment Policy. Some major problems encountered by the migrants in the countries of employment include for example, premature termination of job contracts, changing the clauses of contract to the disadvantage of the workers, delay in payment of salary, violation of minimum wage standards, freezing of fringe benefits and other perks, forced overtime work and without returns, and denial of permission to keep one's own passport. Causes of stagnancy in occupation pattern of India. First is slow growth of industrial sector. The cause of stagnancy in occupation pattern is the slow growth of industrial sector, especially the manufacturing sector. Thus, the slow growth of our industrial sector has kept the occupation pattern traditional. Second, neglect of small scale and cottage. The neglect of small scale and cottage industries is the factor responsible for the traditional nature of our occupation pattern. These industries use labor intensive technique of production. With small amount of capital, these industries can employ more labor. Third is failure of the employment policy. Another reason for failure to change the occupation pattern was the failure of our employment policy. A review of the employment policy during the last several decades of planning reveals that no serious attempt was made by the Indian planners to develop, diversify the rural economy. The unemployment elevation program could not succeed due to poor management and leakages of funds. No sincere efforts have been made by planners to develop agriculture sectors like road construction, land reclamation, digging of canals, etc. In fact, planners 
failed to give emphasis on rural industrialization. As a result, occupation structure remained traditional. The fourth is capital intensive industries. Since the beginning of planning, the planners gave emphasis on capital intensive heavy industries in the producer goods sector. This had very limited unemployment generation effects. Besides, there was rapid expansion of luxury, durable consumable goods and industries using capital intensive methods. As a result, there was no shift of surplus labor from agriculture sector to the industrial sector. Fifth is presence of population growth. Rapid growth of population in India is a major cause of tradition nature of our occupation pattern. Due to population explosion, there is a sharp increase of our workforce, especially in rural part of the country. Generally, more than two-thirds of the increased labor joins labor force. Lack of alternative source of employment in agriculture leads to disguised employment and underemployment. Six is financing out migration. It would also be worth establishing a government system of offering low-interest loans to less well-off immigrants to finance out-migration. Such a system of financing out-migration may also ensure that these immigrants availing the low-interest loans would resort to formal banking channels to transfer their remittance back home. This would further augment the foreign exchange resources which are vital for a developing country like India. Utilizing resource flows and human capital of immigrants to strengthen development. There is an absence of any policy framework regarding the effective utilization of financial inflows from immigrants to strengthen the development process at national or state levels. Similarly, the existing policy regime in India hardly addresses any concern related to the migration of persons with technical or professional expertise, many of whom are willing to make a contribution to the development process either in their non-resident status or as a returnees. These issues need close consideration at national and regional levels and effective policies need to be formulated which can integrate development concern with the migration process. A focused approach is required to ensure that the basic entitlements of the poor to food, elementary education, basic health are fulfilled as also their entitlement to other government programs and subsidies. Then we have improvement in the economic, social and political environment in favor of migration. These advantages faced by poor migrants are accelerated because of their low political bias in source and destination areas because they often comprise a distinct ethnic, social, or cultural group and are seen to be threatening to the livelihoods of workers in their destination area. As a consequence, they can be victims of strong prejudices. There is thus a role for advocacy to remove stereotypes and misapprehensions and for a campaign to buttress the voices of poor migrants. In the case of Indian immigrants and people of Indian origin, it is critical to address how they can participate in selected but specific developmental activities. Another significant issue is the identification of possible ways in which human capital can return to India and having returned can contribute to the development process. Let's summarize this module that anthropologists provide information about communities that help agencies adapt projects to conditions and needs. Thus, an anthropological perspective on the issues of human development is cross-cultural and includes an examination of the present social political and economical theology of globalization with a clearly articulated emphasis on the context appropriate rebuilding or retention of economics with a view towards the production of the environment. The preservation of cultural diversity and the empowerment of communities and their members 
In India, three out of four households include a migrant. However, despite the large scale of migration in absolute number of people involved and India's long history of population and labor mobility, labor migration has really been reliably studied. Migration from one area to another in search of improved livelihoods is a key feature of human history. While some regions and sectors fall behind in their capacity to support populations, others move ahead and people migrate to assess these emerging opportunities. Industrialization widens the gap between rural and urban areas, inducing a shift of the workforce. Towards the industrialization areas, there is extensive debate on the factors that cause populations to shift from those that emphasize individual rationality and household behavior to those that they cite the structural logic of capitalist development. Moreover, numerous studies show that the process of migration is influenced by social, cultural, and economic factors and outcomes can be vastly different for men and women for different groups and different locations. These issues need close consideration at national and regional levels and effective policies need to be formulated which can integrate development concern with the migration process. A focus approach is required to ensure that the basic entitlements of the poor to food, elementary education, basic health are fulfilled as also their entitlement to other government programs and subsidies. Thank you.